Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. Uh, end of the weekend is upon us here already. Monday, right around the corner here, first thing in the morning. Right now it is November 10th, 2024, 1037 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity shows a 3.9 here across this area of the Himalayas, eastern side here, uh, just north of this plate boundary. Let's go ahead and check out uh, California as well. Earlier this morning, or actually earlier this evening, I should say, um, afternoon time, 3.6 earthquake coming into the desert center area off of the San Andreas Fault. Um, not really certain which fault system that occurred on, but uh, it is kind of in the odd zone out here. Just one three-pointer. Also some activity here in the last hour near the Anza area off of the uh, San Jacinto Fault Zone for a 2.1. So things, uh, yeah. Not super active out here across California right now. The other earthquake above 2.5 is going to be a 3.1 here uh, just about an hour or so ago. Northern California, 18 miles deep here into the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, aside from that, general small microquake activity out here across the region. Nothing major going on there for now. Uh, across the Delta area, the Bay region, 2.2 off of the... Uh, Looks like it might be the Concord Fault here, or the Green Valley Fault, showing a little bit of activity out there today. Uh, for the Washington region, general small microquake activity out there. Nothing major going on through the Intermountain West areas, but uh, let's just double check the Yellowstone overview and see what we have here. Uh, this reading, very strong reading right here, is going to be uh, that large earthquake down into the area of Cuba from this morning a 6.8 that's a pretty large earthquake uh, 5.9 prior to that looks like this earthquake was felt in the Florida area earlier this morning and uh, considering the distance there though I mean if you think about it that is a considerable distance there to be felt from Cuba to Florida area where that earthquake struck but uh, there was some video on the uh, internet here showing some uh, light swaying there in Florida. Uh, so this is the reading that you're seeing there on the seismograph. This is not local seismic activity, but uh, rather that large 6.8 showing up there across Yellowstone National Park it was not felt there, but it was definitely picked up on the seismograph stations. As uh, far as it uh, affecting Yellowstone, no effect whatsoever. Uh, I don't see any type of uh, earthquake activity out there locally for now. Uh, the rest of the country pretty quiet. There's that 6.8 down here uh, about 8 o'clock this morning. Prior to that, there was a 5.9, so a foreshock. Now, there's a little bit of migration here to the west along the plate boundary with a couple more fours in the area. Uh, this region of the Cayman Ridge is very capable of producing some upper 7.0 magnitude earthquakes. So an upper 7 would be way more energy released uh, than a 6.8, even though that 6.8 is pretty powerful. Uh, it would definitely uh, produce more damage out there for that 7.8 if it and when it does happen. Historically, uh, there's been some large earthquakes of that magnitude out here. Been a little time since we've seen uh, uh, any big time earthquake activity out there. As far as any major changes going on here across the area, I'm not seeing anything of unusual activity there for now. A lot of times we'll see these earthquakes trigger a, su a sequence of events out here somewhere around the plate boundary. But uh, really not seeing anything of abnormal movement for now. 2.0 coming into California as we speak. That's going to be that uh, uh, 2.1, I believe, right? Anza area. So, all right. Uh, let's see what else we got here across the uh, globe. Clustering going on here across this area. Uh, in the past couple days, a lot of deep activity followed up by surface adjustment. We're starting to fill in this region here as expected. Uh, in the Vanuatu area. I think I mentioned that this morning here. Um, watch for some further activity. Or maybe it was last night. I can't remember. Uh, watch for some further escalation here. Following all this deeper activity across the plate boundary. The general plate stress out there in the region shows the arrows pointing off to the northwest. So any subsequent acti any activity that takes place out here ultimately affects the areas downstream here across the plate boundary. Uh, nothing major going on there for now, but just uh, quite a few fours out there. Goodness. Again, deep, uh, some deep quakes followed up by surface adjustment. 
Uh, nothing major going on there through New Zealand for now. A couple threes out there. Uh, some deeper activity triggering here around the Banda Sea area, it looks like. Uh, across this region of the plate boundary. Although, let's see here. Yeah, I guess it's somewhat deep. Got this one, the most recent earthquake here. 74 miles deep here into this area of the Banda Sea. Right around the Weber Basin area. A little subduction zone interface there. Uh, aside from that, uh, up north, Japan, pretty quiet. Some older movement there from this morning in the Kuril Kamchatka. Uh, pretty deep activity, but nothing uh, as of recent for now. Uh, 2.3 into Alaska area. Hawaii, pretty quiet. Australia, a couple threes out there. Uh, of course, uh, Indonesia, they've been dealing with a lot of volcanic activity out here. And, of course, that's a region of the crunch zone so there's always volcanoes out there across this area uh, just recently making news because of the uh, closeness that humans have built to the volcanoes out there so it's always going to make some world news but nothing out of the norm going on out there for now just a typical volcano out in the indonesia islands area i can't remember the name of that volcano but uh, it's been making the news here recently uh, a bunch of twos and threes out here across the Mediterranean. Let's see what's going on out there. Nothing on the USGS map. So we'll check the EMSC model here. Uh, and we'll double check that here. These guys seem a little, I don't know. Ever since they changed their map out here from their old model, I just don't like it. I don't, I don't like the setup out here, but we'll use them when we can. A couple of earthquake swarms there around Albania. This activity here on the globe here, Look, looks like it's across this area of the world. Um, I'm not for sure what's out there. Let me uh, bring back the aerial. Looks like it's off that fault system right here. I don't know if it's going to let me see the name of that fault, which is not. But uh, a little bit of activity here. North a GNC area. Uh, nothing big, just a couple smaller earthquakes uh, in that swarm going on there. Very visible here on the earthquake 3D globe. Some twos and threes and the latest there, 3.2. A little bit closer um, around the uh, the Greece area. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. So we'll continue to watch this here tonight, see what takes place. Um, trimmer map here. Forgot to check the trimmer activity here. 500, well, it's actually a pretty significant number there. 546 epicenters of trimmer here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, that's through the day today. So it looks like uh, with this event, the trimmer activity, that has stirred up a little bit of strain down here, further upstream here uh, from the trimmer activity. So, I mean, there's a 3.1 fairly recent uh, any type of trimmer activity downstream there into the subduction zone triggers further strain out here across the area. It's not volcanic activity, but uh, trimmer between the two plates, more or less a slow slip type of event. Uh, so somewhat elevated out here. We'll continue to watch for some further movement there uh, in the northern California. As uh, far as space weather activity goes, a um, couple M flares, a near X flare here yesterday. Uh, aside from that, we do have a, a fairly massive coronal hole here, number 90, that is currently facing the Earth. Uh, this is some high wind or high high speed solar wind stream out here uh, that could affect Earth here in a couple days uh, in terms of somewhat potential elevated aurora activity. We'll have to watch that though. It's a little position northward there on the um, northern hemisphere of the sun, but we'll see what happens here in the coming days. Uh, it does look like uh, this area of interest here is starting to flare. Notice uh, super large arches here of uh, magnetic complexity. That sunspot is directly looking at it. So uh, the flare threat has been updated to 30% chance again. Uh, M flare at 70, C flare around 99% chance or so. And the main culprit is going to be the sunspot right here, 3889. Uh, starting to stretch uh, some magnetic arches there across the area. Uh, these other sunspots pretty quiet, but uh, this is the main area of focus for now. 
And of course, it is in the earth directed view. So anything that does blast off from there in terms of CME activity will be uh, geo effective there, almost certainly. 75% um, there of the moon out there, if you got uh, some visuals. I love it when it's about 75% full and you, you use a zoom cam. Uh, you can see all the crater features out there when it's about this this type of illumination there. It's beautiful. Uh, nothing major in the Aurora forecast there for now, folks. Uh, Aurora is right now fairly minimal at best. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, nothing major in the severe weather department for now. Um, knocking on the door out here of Northern California, my neck of the woods, we have a storm system. Going to bring some uh, rain to the valleys and uh, some mountain snow out here across the Cascades and the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, not a whopper of a storm, but it will linger around for a little bit, followed by another system, bringing in some wet weather and some snow once again as we head towards the end of uh, this week. Looks like some more precipitation behind that. Um, severe weather potential. Look at that across Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. Uh, not this coming week, but next week. Uh, the weather model has been trending on something severe popping up here around that time period. We'll have to watch that. Look at all that cold air intermixing with the warmer, moist air. That's when you get that severe weather threat. Uh, after that, uh, wow, look at that. Just sucks up moisture all the way from the Gulf way up north here around the Great Lakes states. Uh, that's going to be interesting there to see what happens with that deal. Um, but a massive low pressure system going to be setting up here across the area of Northern Plains, Great Lakes states here as we head towards uh, next, uh, the end of next week. Not this coming week, but next week. Nothing major in terms of tropical systems for now. It uh, looks like maybe some more rain out there for California as we head uh, towards the end of November. But uh, I'll take everything we can get here. That's for uh, for sure. As far as total accumulated precipitation runs out here. Put this into motion. Not a whole lot going on here. Uh, man, see that little... If you look at this cross area right here, there's a little slight green patch right in the middle of some heavier precipitation. That's a rain shadow there. Just south of my area. I, I don't care if it stays south. I just don't want it over my area because then we we, uh, we miss out on the rain. Uh, the storm systems here from the direction that they're coming in produce a lot of rain here through the coast range. Get that rain shadow there in the valley and then it picks back up again in the Sierra Nevada. One of the, the most brutal areas you can live in uh, if you like rain because that uh, rain shadow is not a good thing. A lot of rain out here through the uh, southern plains and there's that line of moisture there that we're looking at from the gulf northward be interesting to see how that plays out all right uh, missy mimi said thank you very much for all the birthday wishes here and uh we chose well she chose olive garden i see the comment on there and uh you know i appreciate all the comments there on my youtube post someone said olive garden come on you could do better than that if it was me, I would be eating at a steak restaurant, having some shrimp, you know, prime rib. But Missy Mimi's picked out Olive Garden. She likes her pasta. She likes her uh, her meal. And that, that's what we went with. So, you know, it's not the fact of doing what, uh, you know, the, the most high-class restaurant you can choose. She wanted to go to Olive Garden. And that's what we chose there. And they do have some good food. Uh, I like I actually had their lasagna. Um, and normally I'll pick up pick up something like seafood ish, but uh, just w with the lasagna today. So uh, anyway, yeah, she said happy uh, or thanks for all the happy birthday wishes there. Um, let's see what else we got here, folks. I think that's about it here for now. I'm not quite 100% on my voice. The coughing's getting less, but it still sounds like someone's got a voodoo doll of me and is basically choking my uh my wind box my voice box here a little odd but uh we're getting better all right folks i'm out of here have yourself a good evening good morning mondays right around the corner goodness we'll catch you guys back out here in the morning sometime stay safe